chapter 1 or chapter 78 from the translated version of Markande Puran by Vivek Dev Roy. Markande said, I have spoken to you about Surya's son Savarni. He is referred to as the 8th Manu. Now hear about his origin in detail. Listen, Ravi's son, the immensely fortunate Savarni, became the lord of a Manvantara because of the favours of Mahamaya. In the preceding Manvantara of Swarachisha, the king named Suratha was born in Chaitra's lineage. He was the king of the entire earth and he protected his subjects properly treating them like his own sons. There were kings who did not destroy the Kolas and they became his enemies. Though he wielded an extremely powerful staff, he had a battle with them. In that battle, the kings who did not destroy the Kolas defeated him. After this, he returned to his own city and ruled over his kingdom alone. Nevertheless, the immensely fortunate one was attacked by his powerful enemies. He was weak in strength and wicked and evil-souled advisers conspired against him. Even though he was in his own city, they robbed him of his treasury and army. Having lost all his possessions, the lord of the earth pretended to go out on a hunt. Alone, he rode a horse and went to the desolate forest. There, he saw the hermitage of the noble Brahman, Sumedha. The place was adorned with the sage's disciples and with predatory creatures that behaved in a serene way. Honoured by the sage, he resided there for some time. In the sage's excellent hermitage, he roamed around here and there. With his mind still attracted to thoughts of mine, he thought, I used to rule over that city earlier, but it has been lost to me now. Are my wicked servants following dharma when they rule over it? My brave elephant, Supradhan, was always in must. Having come under the control of my enemies, is it enjoying objects of pleasure? There were those who were always devoted to me, giving me food, riches and vessels. They must certainly be the followers of other kings now. My treasury was accumulated with a great deal of difficulty. There is no doubt that it is now being frittered away in evil pursuits through wicked conduct. In this way, the king thought about various things. He saw a Vashya in that Brahman's hermitage and asked him, Who are you? Why have you come here? Why are you grieving? It is evident that you are in a distressed frame of mind. The Vash heard these affectionate words spoken by the king and replied humbly to the king. The Vash said, I am a Vash named Samadhi. I was born in a wealthy family. My wicked wife and sons were greedy about my riches. I have been deprived of my relatives, wife and sons. Thus, deceived by my relatives and friends who have taken away my riches, I have come to this forest miserable. Right now, I do not know if everything at home is well or not. Are my sons behaving in a virtuous way or are they behaving in a wicked way? The king asked, you have been deprived of your riches by your greedy wife and sons. Hence, 
why is your mind still tied to them in bonds of love the vash replied your words are certainly true but what can i possibly do my mind is not drawn to cruelty because of their greed for the riches they have deceived me and have cast aside the love for a father the love for a husband has been cast aside the love for a relative has been cast aside however my mind is still affectionate towards them oh immensely intelligent one i do not comprehend this i do not know the reason though my relatives are devoid of qualities my mind is full of affection towards them i sigh on their account my mind is distressed because of them what can i possibly do my mind is not cruel and i cannot hate them both of them presented themselves before the brahmana sage the vashya named samadhi and the excellent king as is proper they showed him the due respect having seated themselves the vashya and the king started to converse with him the king said o illustrious one i wish to ask you about something please tell me my mind is miserable and i cannot control myself my kingdom has been lost yet i have a sense of ownership over my kingdom o excellent sage though i know the truth it is as if i am ignorant what is the reason for this this one has been deceived by his wife sons and servants they have cast him aside nevertheless he is full of affection towards them in this way both he and i are extremely miserable though we can see the taint in being attached to material objects our minds are affected by a sense of mine oh immensely fortunate one why is it like this though we know we are overwhelmed with delusion because of this sense of mine our discrimination is destroyed and we are foolish the rishi replied oh immensely fortunate one all creatures possess this knowledge about association with material objects but material objects affect them in different ways some creatures are blind during the day other creatures are blind during the night there are also creatures to whom night and day appear as identical but it is not true that only humans possess knowledge indeed all wild animals domestic animals and birds also possess knowledge the knowledge of humans is like that of birds and animals the knowledge that they and humans possess is similar behold the knowledge of those birds though they are suffering from hunger themselves they suffer from delusion and are dropping grains into the beaks of their young ones o tiger among men humans also hanker after their sons do you not perceive that this is greed because of the expectation of getting something back in return nevertheless they are whirled around in a sense of mind and fall down in a whirlpool of delusion the power of mahamaya is the reason why they are established in the state of samsara there is no reason to be surprised at this when the lord of the universe was immersed in yoga and the sea mahamaya originated from hari and confounded the entire universe the illustrious goddess mahamaya forcibly seizes the minds of even those who are learned and thrusts them into this delusion she created the entire universe and its mobile and immobile objects she is the one who confers boons and it is through her favors that men obtain emancipation she is supreme knowledge she is the eternal cause behind emancipation she is the lord of all lords she is the reason behind the bondage of samsara the king asked o illustrious one who is the goddess mahamaya that you spoke about o brahmana where did she originate what is the nature of her work tell us what are her powers what is her nature where did she come from o supreme among those who know about the brahman i wish to hear the truth about everything the rishi replied 
she is eternally embodied in everything in this universe however she has originated in many different ways listen to me she appears to accomplish the tasks of the gods though she exists eternally the worlds say that she has originated when the entire universe was deluged in a single ocean of water vishnu was asleep immersed in yoga at the end of the kalpa the eternal lord was lying down on shesha at that time two terrible asuras known as madhu and katabha manifested themselves from the wax in vishnu's ears and got ready to kill brahma at the time prajapati brahma was seated on the lotus in vishnu's navel he saw the two terrible asuras and that janardana was asleep he sought to awake yoganidra the one who makes her abode in hari and hara's eyes he praised her with single minded devotion in his heart brahma said you are the supreme goddess of the universe you are the cause behind the creation preservation and destruction of the universe i praise the illustrious nidra you are vishnu's unmatched energy you are swaha you are swadha you are vashatkara sound is your atman your sweet form eternally exists in aksharas you are established in the three mantras in particular you are always established in the half a matra that cannot be pronounced you are sandhya you are savitri o goddess you are the supreme mother you are the one who sustains the universe you are the one who creates the universe you are the one who protects it o goddess at the end you are the one who always delivers at the time of creation you are the one who is in the form of creation at the time of preservation you are the one who exists in the form of protection like that at the time of the destruction of the universe you are the form of destruction you pervade the entire universe you are mahavidya you are mahamaya you are mahamedha you are mahasmriti you are mahamoha you are bhagavati you are mahadevi you are maheshwari you are everything in prakriti you are the one who creates three gunas you are kalaratri you are maharatri you are the terrible mohratri you are shri you are ishwari you are modesty you are intelligence you are characterized by understanding you are shame you are nourishment you are contentment you are tranquility you are patience you wield a sword you wield a trident you wield a club you wield a chakra your form is terrible you hold a conch shell you hold a bow and arrows your weapons are pushundi and a bludgeon you are gentle you are gentler than that your gentleness is unlimited you are exceedingly beautiful you are the best you are superior to the best indeed you are the supreme goddess you are everything that exists and you are everything that does not exist your atman is in everything you are the power in everything how can i possibly extol someone like you you are the one who creates the universe you are the one who preserves the universe you are the one who destroys the universe you have brought the great lord under the subjugation of sleep who can possibly praise you you have made vishnu isha and me as your bodies who possesses the capacity to extol you o goddess thus praised please use your pervasive powers to confound these two unassailable asuras madhu and katabha gently bring achyuta the lord of the universe back to consciousness for the sake of killing the two giant asuras wake him up the rishi continued brahma whose birth is not manifest praise the goddess full of tamas in her intelligence in this way the intention was to wake vishnu up and kill madhu and katabha she emerged from vishnu's eyes nose arms heart and chest and stood there 
freed from her janardana the lord of the universe woke up he had been lying down on that single ocean and saw the evil souled madhu and katabha extremely energetic and valiant in their attempt to kill brahma their eyes were red with rage the illustrious hari awoke and fought with them using his arms as weapons the lord wrestled with them for 5000 years they were extremely strong and intoxicated and were confounded by mahamaya therefore they told keshava seek a boon from us the illustrious one replied if you are satisfied let it be such that you are killed by me what other boon can i ask for now this is what i want having been deceived in this way they glanced at the universe everything was covered in water they looked at the illustrious lotus eyed one and said we are pleased at having fought with you you should be praised but let our deaths come about this way kill us in a place that is not flooded with water the illustrious one holding the conch shell chakra and mace agreed to this he placed them on his thighs and sliced off their heads with his chakra thus praised by brahma she herself arose i will tell you again about the powers of the goddess listen chapter 1 ends